Um, so welcome all six of you. <laughs> it's fine. I'm I'm used to this. Um, the talk was previously de uh, delivered at DEFCON this uh, last summer by Tigran Georgian and me. I'm Vagan Tukharyan, not the Tigran guy. So who we are, both of us work for Qualys, and uh, we share three passions, which is breaking stuff and fixing stuff as our daily job, interested in time travel, it's kind of like side business that we do, and uh, we love to try, uh, basically doing triathlons, swimming, biking, and running. That's our real job. Uh, so what is this talk about? Talk is about um, yet another application layer denial of service method. We will talk about the method, the tool. I'll share uh, some stats, talk about the defense ag against this thing, and we'll try to figure out how to protect and use this. Uh, use this and how to protect against this. So why, why do we talk about this? Because of this nice little thing, the time machine. And uh, wouldn't it be nice to have a time machine that would let you know what Google stock price would be three days from now, let's say, or let's limit the functionality, let's say what would be the load on your server two seconds from now or two days from now. And would your server withstand the load or not? Stuff like that. Since this little machine doesn't exist in uh, technicality, we think we have something similar to that, which is the method that we have. It's supposed to be a joke, but I'm a bad stand-up comedian, so let's go on with it. So what, what, what is DOS? So basically, DOSing is basically trying to be a a parasite, a bad guy, and crushing stuff in some cases, degrading the functionality of the system. Uh, here, here is a little uh, taxonomy of DOS attacks coming from Anton Chuwakin. Uh, we are uh, mostly going to talk about resource exhaustion types of denial of service attacks and uh, more precisely about application layer denial of service attacks. So what, what, how do bad guys perform DOS or DDoS? So there is this good old method of just getting the index HTML over and over and over and over till the server dies. And if you have some money or Russian connections, you can do the same thing from hundreds and thousands of hundred thousands of botnets, bots. Uh, the the cons of this are like you don't have feedback and uh, load is near symmetrical, meaning uh, server to client. It's not really symmetrical, but it, I mean it's comparable. Uh, and there are this new, there is this new breed of bots. Uh, we call them slow star attacks, slow lorry, slow HTTP test, slow read, that strive to have very asymmetrical use, where the client is probably just sitting on a read or write uh, and using very few cycles of his CPU, causing the server do the same, but uh, since it doesn't render the response, uh, it doesn't really have that uh, price of creating the content and preparing it. And, uh, Basically, resource consumption becomes more asymmetrical with these new, new things, uh, new attacks, and some of them are uh, 
uh, shown you that uh, web servers are not prepared to fight with them. Uh, there is also PKI abuse where you can uh, create asymmetrical load uh, by renegotiating your keys or resetting the session or using SQL wildcards to effectively load your to effectively load the target web servers DB performing large queries. And uh, web sockets are kind of new thing for web development, but they also have this inherited inherent uh, property of keeping connections alive, which is pro uh, which which kind of is the same as slow star tests are uh, attacks are trying to as are striving to get. But uh, WebSockets already has it in it. So what I mean, when with slow lorries, let's say you are trying to keep the connection alive and trickle in the data, with WebSockets you don't have to artificially do that. WebSocket gives you that persistent connection. And the only thing that attacker needs to know is how many of those WebSocket connections the server could handle in order to overwhelm him. Uh, other exotic layer 7 attacks are like uh, uh, the DB overwhelming with wildcard. Uh, what would be cool to have a genetic algorithm to try to figure out which exactly payload with what kind of wildcard would give more load on a server. That, that is probably another talk for another person. And uh, there are these new breeds of attacks called business logic above layer seven attacks where you basically overwhelm the uh, badly designed system by, for example, adding too many items on in a card or uh, logging, making it log too much, stuff that is not uh, necessarily coming from shortcomings of uh, HTTP protocol itself or the servers. So what do we have uh, is just another get flooding, nothing match, uh, nothing more. It's, it's not exotic. It's not going to have any, uh, any of the PKI uh, uh, resetting or slow star kind of asymmetrical resource consumption. Uh, it is gonna be, it is gonna try to be as asymmetrical as possible though. Uh, first of all, if you are an attacker, not a regular consumer of web service or website, you are not rendering uh, the response, and that by itself is asymmetrical. And uh, to add to that, if you are doing get flooding more or less intelligently, you could do get flooding on the, ser uh, on the resources that are the priciest, and that's what we are gonna do. So the, the method is pretty simple and uh, probably not very innovative. It's just to spider over the whole website and gather all the resources, calculate the average speed of the transfer, and identify the, the resources that have lower transfer speed. What we assume here is the slower transfer speed correlates to a load on a server. If you take out the noise from the network, uh, in this case, resource consumption is not significant. Uh, sorry, resource size is not significant because uh, the metric is the speed. And uh, if the speed differs from one resource to another, the resource with the slower speed, as we think, has more CPU 
cycles dedicated to it on the uh, uh, server side to come up with a response unless there is a sleep statement somewhere in the code. So here is some stats from uh, the data of a usual or, or an average web, uh, web resource. So the regular resources would be somewhere here, normal resources. These are uh, the ones that your server responds to real fast. And here are the outliers, the slow resources that we want to target. So the whole talk is just about how to find this, how to make it more or less reliable. And then there is a tool that goes on and pushes those uh, get or post requests over and over till the end target dies. So uh, just taking those uh, that speed, uh, speed of the resources is not going to cut because there will be fluctuation. And then there will be outliers. There will be resources with very fast speed and very slow speed. Uh, there will be error conditions. And uh, there will be also network speed variations. For that, we do post analysis, taking the resources that we think are subject to our test and uh, do perform the requests over and over in n times n is definable in, in a usual case 10. And then we get the mean of all those uh, numbers we collected. We will then take the resources with lower mean, which means they are more precise. And we'll throw away uh, resources with the uh, large variance. So uh, here, here is the outcome of of a test like that. We have four quadrants, and um, we're mostly interested in this lower left quadrant where resources have low speed and very low deviations uh, variance and. Those, those are the ones that are most probably going to cause more pain to the server, uh, unless those are very, very small numbers, which means there, is, there was a mistake somewhere. Well, let's do a little demo. So here the tool is running. Actually, this is a recorded demo of the tool. I'm not so brave. Um, uh, after it ran, it did give out an XML, uh, or it can have a, it. Print, uh, it has some logging, but uh, XML is nicer. So in XML, you will see the speed of the resource and. Uh, the mean of the speed of the resource and the standard deviation. This would, uh, this particular run was done on a local machine, and the slowest resource is here on a, a PHP page that calculates pi, and it's very very slow compared to regular resources. And standard deviation is very low because it's predictably slow. So what, what else this tool can do? This is uh, just a pet project of my friends. It's, he also creates different plots out of him, uh, out of the data for visualizing. Uh, and as I told you here, we, we are concentrating on the data, on, on the resources that basically occur in the lower left quadrant, which means our measurements are precise and 
uh, the resources that we found are slow. And uh, we, we throw away the fast and unprecise resources. And uh, the other two quadrants are not that interesting either. So I don't want to play with the demo, uh, the video, because it's going to give me some jittering. So uh, also included in the tool is the possibility to draw the uh, link graph of the website. So when when we were running in a demo previously, we were running on a local host. Now we're gonna run on a, a real life application that is made based on a concrete CMS, and it's gonna try to crawl three levels deep, and it's gonna iterate ten times when it's trying to uh, gather stats. And as a result, it got index.php blog as the slowest resource. And uh, uh, as an uh, added bonus, you can feed in the XML that you produced and specify number of num uh, iterations you want to go through, basically attacking or stress testing the server. And at the end, it will show you how much the mean changed and what was the deviation as compared to initial numbers. Then we uh, did a, a little test on a lab that we created where we had i7 four core server running an application developed with, with the concrete CMS and uh, running from the Linux laptop, which had only 10% of resource consumption. This is the laptop. This is the server. And uh, here we run some tests on, uh, on the uh, laptop. Running actually seven parallel uh, get flood attacks from seven parallel processes. And uh, we see that CPU usage on the client, oopsie, sorry, it ended way too soon. This is what I was afraid of. So basically the server is totally f flooded. It's uh, CPU usage is almost 90, 98% when the client is at 10% and only seven parallel threads or processes. So that was the demo. So what, what could be done uh, or what we were trying to also do is to figure out what if uh, if the choice of the resources is right. In order to do that, in order to be more or less positive on the choice, you could do uh, parallel stressing and see if uh, service is really degrading. In this case. Uh, I guess we were running three parallel attacks and uh, mean is going up. But also deviation goes up too. So in, in this particular case, it's, uh, it's not exactly a, a good choice. But using this technique, you could figure out if you are in a, in a right direction or not. And we were thinking of integrating it into the tool and making it an uh, automated element, but that becomes, uh, then tool becomes uh, one click uh, attack tool and then it, 
it's uh, it's not as useful. So uh, similar tools to this, uh, many similar tools. Uh, some of them have some of the functionality that we had, but uh, uh, none of them had the whole complex of crawling and testing and being one click. Uh, but there were some that were really interesting. For example, Tsang is uh, Erlang based and is able to simulate up to 1 million users from one machine, which is amazing. So how do we defend against this? I guess I'm, I'm not the one to answer to this question. There will be talk tomorrow about this. <laughs> but I'll try my best. Tomorrow, 9 a.m., is it? 9.30? 9.30? Which track? Track. Track 3. Yeah, track three, defense against denial of service. Uh, so now let's see what we tried. So load balancing is a good way to go against DOS, uh, DDoS, expensive resources. Are expensive. You have to have many. Uh, I mean, more than one server, uh, and also you have to maintain the load balancer. Well, you can use our tool to figure out the resource consumption, uh, resources that are big consumers, the the hogs, and try to fix them or do something else. Elevate the whole. Uh, I mean, downgrade the whole speed on all the uh, resources somehow, so the attacker will be fooled. Uh, we'll try to see if there are any Apache configuration suggestions that would be helpful. Uh, we'll see if there are Apache modules that could help. And we were thinking of a, a mod security script that would basically do the same thing as this tool. But being on board, it would be more precise, and then it could prescribe what to do right away. But we got lazy and fat and forgot about it. So load balancers, they usually fight using rate limiters or unusual traffic filtering, source IP checking, works. But there are some issues with it. Uh, if detector detects there is uh, protection, it can kind of work right under the threshold. Sometimes these protections uh, don't work because uh, in some cases they just redirect an IP and if you know the real de destination IP, then that machine is tossed. Stuff like that. So HA proxy sounds looks like it can do stuff. Uh, one good uh, property of it is dividing the resources between static and dynamic and basically having two different policies for two groups of resources and setting different thresholds for different sets of resources, which is nice because you don't want to limit uh, your index PHP usage as much as your search PHP, let's say, if you are going through rate limiting way of protecting. Uh, commercial protection services, um, some of them work. They have the same problems or features and features as uh, as you would basically install your own uh, um, load balancer. It's a resource limiters uh, actually limiting 
is the key here, limitation per IP, limitation per region, limitation per page. Uh, those are the keywords for commercial protection services. Um, some nice side effects for those who were going just for DOS protection, they could also enable SQL injection and XSS protection right away. But they are costly. Uh, the ones that we looked at, if 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 you really use them, they are gonna be upwards of hundred fifty dollars per month for a for, for a host. And a uh, few real customers of those services told us that full blown solution is not acceptable because it degrades user experience. There are delays added, captchas, stuff like that, that uh, website owners think are not that useful. So, of course, we can use the tool that we have or other tools to profile as a QA tool, profile your web application, find the problem, uh, the resource hogs, deal with them. In ideal world, we would also generate a config file for HA proxy or any of the Apache modules that could do rate limiting and feed it. But as I told you, we got lazy and we forgot about all. So uh, what else can be done? Let's see if we could do anything with regular Apache. We tried, we couldn't find anything particularly working with just a, pat, a plain old Apache config. And we were, we had this lab of running one client t doing 10 parallel requests over and over on the heaviest resource. And uh, the uh, target is i7 four core eight gig gigabyte machine. And with 10 parallel requests, 98% CPU utilization is almost standard for, for, for the bad examples that we have. And, uh, and then we tried a couple of uh, Apache modules. Apache mode security, there, there are ways of doing it. Uh, pretty effective but strict. You, you limit offensive IPs right away by just putting uh, limiters. Uh, mod limit IP con, similar, a bit more crude. And you need to come up with the number that you specify, which is kind of guessing. And all of these limit, uh, rate limiters uh, are like that. Mod QAS is uh, it's uh, similar to other two, but has uh, added bonus. It can also fight with slow lorry, slow raid, and slow HTTP test. Uh, this guy is the most advanced from all of the modules that we saw. It has more sophisticated algorithm of, of calculating how much each IP can uh, basically hustle web server. It has this credit and depth mechanisms of uh, basically allowing you to go a bit deeper with, with each client and then if it figures that that's it, this is a violator, then it cuts it off. Pretty tricky to set it up, but it's working. And uh, if you can read the manual and try it, it also can help you to set those numbers because you can kind of run it in a monitor mode and come up with the configuration numbers. Uh, Mod throttle was supposed to be the one that would do whatever we want, which is which is looking at the real numbers of load on the server, not guessing in a 
in a um, uh, in a module that sits before the Apache and basically doesn't even know what's going on with CPU usage. But this has been discontinued, hence the angry green face. Uh, mod evasive. Uh, our favorite was easy to set up, works. And it has this nice feature of blocking period, so it's not doesn't mean that you block it forever, so you can set it up to a couple of seconds or a minute. So the real user would be still working, but bots will have hard time on pushing traffic on it. Uh, uh, we were also trying to figure out if you would use any of these modules. Do you have a problem with configuring your server, the defense of your server against slow star attacks? Good news, not, no problems, mod evasive also protects from slow attacks uh, besides being uh, very good with uh, just flooding attacks. And this guy is a very promising little module uses Project Honeypot to gather violator IPs and basically uh, blacklist them if you want to. So kind of finishing up the talk, usage, what you can do. You can be a good boy and just use it as a QA tool. Um, basically profile your web application, find the problematic links, be a bad boy and try to stress it a bit, see how it behaves in a stressful situation or be a very bad boy and to DDoS using this. So empty promises, we would like to understand how load balancers work a bit, a bit more in depth. Uh, we would like to see if we can uh, add SQL wildcard this, uh, wildcards to the attacks, uh, figure out if we can automate the state reset and figure out if there is load related to it and go deeper with that. And add that automated attacker service degradation measurement in parallel and uh, basically deliver a turnkey Hacking tool, probably not going to happen. Uh, that was it. Thanks a lot. And uh, here is the URL where the source code is. Source code is ugly. It's one source file. But it's open, so you can take and change. Uh, C++. And uh, all the references are here for all the modules and uh, all the stuff that was referred. And I would be happy to answer to your questions. Please. So when it, when it crawls, um, do you just crawl all the things that you get or do you also try to form a submission? No form submission. But uh, you are not limited to its crawler. You can provide an XML file. Yeah, it has to be URLs. It has to be of the format that has, we can read, but yeah, it has an input capability. You can feed in anything from your zap or whatever, if you can write a transformer. No, no post request. Yes. yes. No form submissions through post. Is there a plan to add them in the future? Like another type of request? Depends on how community will embrace this. It's, if there is, there is use for it, we'll do it. If not, then this is just 
gonna, gonna, gonna be the theoretical thing that we played with and took the method into the commercial tool. Uh, Qualys web application scanner is gonna have something similar to this, but in a more mild way without stressing the customer. Alrighty then, if no questions, we are done. Thank you. Thank you.